Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome back to the quarterfinals, day two of the Earthings Masters 2020. And I would like to show you one more game, but not Daniel Dubov and Magnus Carlsen, because this was covered plenty of times already. But I found another very beautiful, very attacking game where Maxim Vashelagraf with the black pieces played against Wesley So. So, from what you remember, Maxim Vashelagraf won first mini match, and Wesley So had to win the second one so he is in the must win situation so let's see what happened uh, on the board Wesley so open with the knight f3 so Zucker third opening we have knight f6 and now transposition to the uh, English opening we have g6 we have knight c3 uh, and now d5 c takes on d5 knight takes on d5 and now the most popular line is queen a4 uh, or also e4 asking the the knight to what you gonna do here however uh, here as I said Wesley so had to win so he goes for the very very aggressive h4 h5 um, and so on uh, and here we have knight c3 first b takes on c3 uh, and now it seems like black actually should go for h5 blocking the advancement of that of that pawn or play at least something like h6 so if h5 is played then this pawn can can come to g5 so this would be the, the idea. However, Maxim Vashelagraf played that position a couple of times, so he just ignores everything on the king side and he played c5. Uh, we have h5 as planned, bishop g7, and now rook b1. Uh, we have also knight c6 development, e3, so preparing d4. And now, interesting thing that this position was reached by Maxim Vashelagraf. We have at least one game in the database uh, where Maxim went for queen c7 before uh, but uh, as we already know he improved a lot of uh, positions um, of the openings which which he played and he showed that couple of times um, and here uh, I will just show you what happened in that game after d4 uh, he played bishop g4 pinning the knight so that is the idea queen b3 now unpinning um, and now after b6 Knight g5, uh, the knight was of course free to go, and after castle exchanging the pawns, uh, bishop d3 now threatening to take on g6, as this pawn actually is pinned, uh, then we had the queen d6, and after knight e4 attacking the, the queen, queen retreat to c7, and believe me or not, but we had just threefold repetition, so I don't know the story behind uh, this game, however, this is what happened, uh, so Maxim actually actually thought, okay, this is pretty much safe for me uh, just to castle immediately. So he didn't even bother uh, of the queen c7. We have h takes on g6, h takes on g6, and now queen a4. Very sneaky move because now look at this. This queen went to the queen side. However, the idea is to bring the queen to the open h5 and attack the position of the king. So very, very sneaky. Uh, we have e5, so there is no time for playing anything like queen c7. We have e5, now taking under control h4, and now bishop a3, attacking the pawn. And this position is already very tricky. If black tries to play something like queen d6, defending the pawn, the problem is that the queen was covering actually h4. So uh, in this case, queen h4 and white gonna have very strong attack on the position of the king. Uh, what are other options? You cannot go for the b6 because your knight is hanging, uh, but black actually had a very nice move e4, kicking the knight. And now where to go with the knight? Uh, because d4, for example, is defended by this by this pawn. So probably something like knight g1. You cannot take the pawn because you're gonna lose the rook for free. You even cannot defend that rook. Uh, so you would have to play uh, something like knight g1 and then queen d6 is possible as uh, this uh, queen h4 
transport is not longer possible. So this is a great idea to play e4 immediately. However, we have rook e8 by Maxime Vachel Lagraf. So he thought, okay, I need to defend my pawn. It was defended by the tactic, by this beautiful tactic. But we have rook e8 uh, and now bishop c5. So winning the pawn uh, literally for free. Uh, now we have e4, so pretty much similar, but the knight doesn't need to retreat to g1, but can also go to d4. So this is very nice. Now we have knight e5, avoiding uh, exchange of the, of the knights and also preparing to jump to d3. And here Wesley so missed the very nice idea of remaneuvering the bishop. It doesn't win anything, but this bishop can actually be remaneuvered to f4. How? Bishop b6. Of course, the bishop is defended, so that is the idea. It cannot be taken because the, the rook is lost. Uh, so probably something like queen e7 as the queen is under attack. But now bishop c7. Uh, and now you cannot take the bishop because you're gonna lose this rook so that's another idea so probably after a knight c6 uh, bishop finally can go to f4 so what why to move the bishop to f4 first of all uh it can try to uh, exchange the dark square bishop and weaken the position of the king uh, and second uh, can stay on this diagonal which is very nice because it's covering these two squares very important because the knight uh, for example can jump over there and be very very strong and very nasty uh, and I will show you one of the variations in the game where this could be very very handy uh, Queen c2 was played so um, Wesley so just said okay my queen has nothing to do on the queen side we have queen c2 now attacking the pawn uh, and now we have b6 uh, kicking the bishop so bishop a3 and now instead of very natural bishop b7 because Maxime Vachil Lagraf went for b6 so I thought okay bishop b7 is a very natural here but maybe he was afraid of bishop b5 because now it's attacking the rook uh, also this bishop covered all of the squares and also the knight covers uh, e6 so it looks like black would uh, lose the exchange however after queen f6 this rook actually shouldn't be taken uh, but there is not easy to find the better better moves uh, the point is that this bishop is also defending d3 so after taking uh, we would have knight d3 and after king d1 uh, black gonna win back the pawn so knight f4 and after king e2 uh, knight h1 and of course this bishop can uh, can be sold for one extra pawn or uh, you know take this this knight immediately but of course pawn is a pawn so bishop f7 first and after queen f7 rook h1 and the game can continue uh, black has one pawn less however pair of bishops uh, in on the very very nice diagonals this bishop maybe is pointing at e4 but at the same time this pawn is extremely extremely dangerous uh, especially that white doesn't have the light square bishop so uh, it can be very very annoying uh, however we have knight d3 immediately and of course we have uh, bishop d3 he takes on d3 and now uh, again um, taking this pawn and staying on the same diagonal with the rook is not the, the greatest idea bishop f5 is coming so uh, winning at least exchange this time the queen can actually defend so it's not only losing the rook uh, but the exchange but it's still uh, not the greatest idea so this is why we have queen d1 the idea is very simple uh, bring the queen um, to the to the king side and attack on the h file for now this bishop covers couple of squares here the queen as well uh, however there are also uh, options for example go to to h2 and black cannot cover everything so this is why first we have queen d7 queen f3 uh, and now bishop b7 so at least the queen cannot go to h3 uh, immediately because it's covered by the by the queen uh, and at the same time the bishop is developed and attacking the queen so we have queen g3 and of course now the queen can come to to h4 or h2 so now what is the best idea for black it's a very very difficult position now uh because white achieved everything brought the queen uh you know from the a4 uh just 
to g3 and now threatening to attack on the h5. Probably the best would be queen d5, but it's still very, very difficult. Queen h2, now f6, making a space for the king. Uh, and now look at this, knight b5, and this is what I said. This bishop covers um, the square on d6. It would be even stronger if the bishop can stay on this diagonal. Uh, but d6 is already enough. Also, the knight now can jump to c7. So probably queen g2 would be, would be the best here. And after queen h7, king f7, this knight d6 comes with the check. King e6 and now knight e8. And now if rook takes on e8, then of course we would have queen h3. Otherwise, if uh, white would like to win one the bishop and second bishop, uh, then of course the rook would be exposed. And you cannot go, for example, rook f1 uh, because you're gonna get checkmated this way. So this pawn, as I said, is a very, very nasty and controls the, the white squares in the front of the king. So very, very dangerous. Uh, so probably, as I said, queen h3 would have to be played. And then after f5, just exchange the queens. And yes, the rook can come to h7 but uh, black uh, also have the possibilities for example of uh, still you know checkmating the king so the rook has to stay on the first rank also this rook has to be very careful uh, if taking the bishop maybe this rook can be very nasty uh, and win some material or even checkmate the, the white king uh, it's a very very uh, tricky position so uh, yes white have the extra exchange but against pair of bishops and very shaky position of the king. Uh, also, queen h1, it looks like, okay, uh, we can uh, win back the exchange, but after queen h1, um, queen h1, we're gonna have bishop h1, and here the knight, of course, doesn't take the, the bishop for free because it has no escape squares now, because the, the king can come to f7 and win back the material, uh, but rather knight c7. And after, uh, let's say, king d7 uh, we're gonna have this position where a white have extra exchange and should win that game uh, so very nice uh, position and it's not that easy actually for black to defend even the pair of bishops but of course one of the bishops can be uh, exchanged probably uh, and then the rook gonna be better than the bishop in the end game so queen d5 the strongest but still probably not enough um, to do draw that game Maxime brought the rook to the fifth rank, to the open fifth rank, uh, where the, the rook is fully mobile. Uh, and now we have f4, kicking that rook. So rook a5, now attacking this annoying bishop, because the bishop on this diagonal would be very strong, but on this diagonal is also very nasty. Watching at f8, so if the queen come to h4, we're gonna have the checkmate on h7. So first the bishop is under attack, bishop before, and now now the rook has to uh, retreat and it looks like okay rook h5 it looks pretty pretty good actually uh, forcing to exchange uh, and then after king f2 trying to bring the rook probably black would just to force to exchange the queens and after queen g4 h takes on g4 uh, we could have something like knight f5 it's not that easy to defend these pawns what black would like to do is bring this pawn uh, to f5 maybe support one of the pawns uh, and this pawn probably gonna be lost but it's not that easy also to take it because black have the the light square bishop but uh white have the knight but white knight has to be of course remaneuvers first uh maybe bishop e4 and then after knight e7 with the check a king f8 now knight f5 also with the check with the attack on the bishop uh, king g8 but now knight d6 trying to exchange maybe light square bishop that would make a lot of sense so bishop h7 uh, and now this would be the possibility of playing f5 that's the main idea but of course e4 and again First, black would have to exchange the, this knight, which uh, is, you know, controlling a lot of squares. It's a very nice place knight. Uh, so probably something like king e3. And after bishop d6, bishop d6, uh, maybe rook d8 bishop e5 uh, and finally this pawn actually can support the pawn on f5 uh, and yeah 
let's say rook h1 and then black have to decide support this pawn support this pawn uh it's still very very tricky pos position according to the engine is better for for white one of these pawns gonna fall um, and if this pawn is fall for example a rook h4 it cannot really be defended uh because if the bishop come come here then of course he's completely lost this is this is not possible rook h8 losing the rook so um so of course uh the bishop has to stay on h7 still position is very tricky this pawn gonna be lost and now white gonna have disconnected past pawns and they are free these pawns are really nicely blocked by the by the pawn and the king and it's not that easy so uh yeah the rook h5 doesn't really work uh but as you see the way would be very very long uh to actually lose that game so probably uh that could be the answer but we have rook d5 in our game and now just keep in mind queen h4 dream move is not possible and i hope you see that already uh because the rook can come on h5 and win the rook on h1 so of course that would be horrible blunder this is why we have f5 and this move is extremely sneaky now how would you like to take it uh, it doesn't really matter uh, but the point is that this queen still wants to get to h4 but the rook cannot go through the pawn uh, so what maxime vachel lagraf he tried to take the pawn with the rook the problem is now we have queen h3 saying if you move the rook then i'm gonna take your queen for free this is beautiful um, so this is why we have f6 now making a space for the king uh because the checkmate is coming uh, but now we have knight f5 so winning finally the exchange g takes on f5 queen h7 a king f7 and now boom rook h6 so the idea is of course to eliminate this pinned bishop first we have bishop e4 now at least defending these two pawns so very solid move but uh it doesn't do much uh, and now we have queen g6 with the check uh, king e6 and now rook h7 so the king moved from the seventh rank but the queen still stays there uh, so of course the bishop is pinned we have rook g8 and now another beautiful move boom wesley so went for bishop f8 attacking this bishop for the for the third time so not much choice the bishop has to be ex exchanged we have rook f8 we have rook g7 with check and now uh if rook f7 it's pretty natural of course it's possible but of course white would just simply exchange uh, everything and in this end game uh, of course white have extra exchange and let's say these pawns are are really ugly so black doesn't have any counterplay and white gonna win easily that game uh so this is why we have queen a4 maxime vachel lagraf looks for the counter play uh the idea is very simple take the pawn uh maybe attack the rook maybe come to the to the c2 if the rook is moved maybe deliver even some checkmate so uh it looks like very very scary also uh, another idea here bishop g2 is possible uh, in the right moment if for example the queen uh, and the rook are, are gone there and then the queen would come to h4 deliver the check this way so it's a very very tricky tricky way of playing uh, the queen also could come to h1 after and for example win that rook so attack from all of the sides of the king in the center especially with this supporting pawn and that could be incredible however would it work or not wesley so calculated and he said it's not gonna work and he played rook before inviting actually black uh, to take the pawn on a2 so what could happen uh queen a2 now we're gonna have simply queen h7 and trying to you know deliver the check and yes black can uh, deliver one check and then what next uh, you have to uh, you know continue the attack and you just need you know a couple of moves Moves to deliver the checkmate the problem is now white gonna be faster uh, rook e7 uh, and of course the king has not many choices uh rook d4 and after let's say king c6 we're gonna have rook c7 king b5 and as you already see uh this would be you know a very beautiful rolling checkmate
night. So that is just too slow. This is why Maxime Vachel Lagraffe retreat with the queen to c6. And now uh, queen h7, pretty natural move, attack the, the king from behind. But we have rook a7. So again, uh, the queen gonna come to g7, deliver some kind of the checkmate here. And if everything falls somehow, then maybe even this rook could come uh, and attack together on b6. So eliminating them, the a7 pawn is al always good. And now if queen d6, let's say uh, we're gonna defend all of these squares and, and with the rook here, it would not work because of queen g7. And now... Uh, it's almost the Zugzwang, what to play next? The queen has a couple of moves, so queen d8, uh, still covering all of the squares around here. Uh, we would have rook d4, now the queen is forced from the from the d file, uh, and after queen e8, now rook a to d7. Uh, and now it's all over, not much can be done here. If f4, we're gonna have uh, queen g4 with the check, uh, and after, let's say, bishop f5, uh, this rook can deliver the check and, and this would be the checkmate and if b5 or any other move it doesn't really matter uh, just to not open this diagonal as I said it doesn't matter because the king gonna be on this diagonal so this way or another uh, we gonna have the checkmate this way uh, or another uh, so this is why Maxime Vachel Lagraffe tries the counterplay but this attack is uh, so slow uh, because I even cannot imagine this bishop would have to take on, on g, uh, g2 uh, and then maybe the queen would have to follow so at least three moves for black to actually create any threat uh, however we have queen f7 and in this position Maxime Vachel Lagraffe resign so what just happened uh, i would like just to tell you that the king has not much squares to go let's say king e5 and after rook e7 is all over uh king d6 queen f6 uh king c5 and we're gonna have the checkmate of course two rooks and the queen uh, are going to, to 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 checkmate in this position without any problem so that's why after queen f7 maxime vachel lagraffe resigned and i would like to show you what happened in the all quarter finals again so as you already see uh wesley so won the second mini match but in tie break uh maxime vachel lagraffe was better and he advanced uh, also also, Taimur Rajabov also in the tie breaks uh, won against Jan Nepomniachtchi. So look at this. First four seats of these tournaments after preliminary uh, stage, Magnus Carlsen and uh, Hikaru Nakamura Wesley so had the six points and they got eliminated, knocked out uh, soon after. And also Jan Nepomniachtchi who got the fourth seat is also eliminated. So all of these four players actually won one of these uh, strong online tournaments. Jan Nepomniachtchi won uh, one of the tournaments. Hikaru won, uh, I think, one or two. Wesley so uh, last time won against Magnus Carlsen in the final. And Magnus Carlsen, of course, won a lot of this, uh, these tournaments. But now we have Daniel Dubov, Temur Rajabov, one of the semifinals, and Levon Aronian against Maxim Vasil Lagraf. And uh, we're going to cover that game uh, as well at least one or two games so if you don't want to miss uh, the the games on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one